Hi, welcome. This is Kristen from Life of Crafting. And my chair is going to make a bunch of noise. I'm here today. I want to show you. I made this card that can be found on the greetery.com's website. It was for their sweet treats um, die that you would find this on, but it was part of their hug and a mug um, collection that was released in 2020 for Christmas. And I really liked this because I wanted to make this as a card for my personal use. And it really took a lot to dissect this card, uh, a lot more than I expected it to be. So I was going to dive in and show you how to make this in case you too had questions on how to make this beautiful card that they designed. So I'm going to start with, I use the extra heavyweight cardstock from Hobby Lobby. This is um, the white. And to start with, this is just a pale pink and this is die cut using their crimped rectangles die and it's the largest die here in the set. So you would just die cut that out and adhere that to the page. So let's get that on there. And they really didn't say where their papers came from. So I had to do a little hunting around to get the, um, the, the polka dot strip on their site is um, a lot tighter with the dots. I found this at Hobby Lobby. It's in their everyday section. To me, it served the purpose because I really, like I said, they don't mention where they got their um, printed paper from. So I just, I just tried this one and it really seemed to make it seem uh, as close as I could get it. I do find their paper's a little thin trying to get glue on. So that to me was about an inch down from the top. And then this is cut out with the the middle of the um, rectangles. And this is the last. Oh, so this one is um, popped up using foam tape. Now, for me, I found doing it lengthwise was a little bit better only because I didn't really have to put as much foam tape on it. It seemed like it used up more going the other way. Um, and I will try to piece in a few little ones here, but this stuff is really like sticks to your scissors and yeah, I'm not a real big fan of that. So let's see, that's how I got all these little ones that were just stuck to my roll. Um, yeah, I was using the uh, hand sanitizer, cleans the stuff off your scissors. I'm guessing it's because of the alcohol in it. So let me just stick that aside. So that is adhered to the center. And I know you're probably thinking like, my Lord, it is not even Easter yet. It's March. She's making these cards. Yeah, I'm needing to because I have an online business that is primarily one that sells in fourth quarter. I Meaning we carry a lot of Christmas decor and stuff. And honestly, it gets so busy starting in like October that by the time you're ready to send Christmas cards or even think about making Christmas cards, I'm about tired of Christmas. So this ain't gonna happen if I don't make cards now. I keep swearing I'm gonna get them uh, addressed and ready to mail out during the summer, but I haven't gotten that successful yet. So the stamp I have done in a different video and I talked about um, trying to die cut these pieces and I'll probably go over a little bit of that as I'm going through it but um, there was some learning curve to doing some of these. I will go and take this and uh, get some of the glitter on it right now. My I'm using the Barely Art Glue and my fine tip is not so fine in the sense of being, um, as you can see, it's exploding at the side. The, the fine tip is coming out. I'm, I, I used half a bottle, maybe. 
and it's already like showing signs of being overused. Um, so I don't go all the way to the edge because the problem is you're going to need to pop these up and your dimensionals are not going to want to stick too well when it's totally covered. So I try to leave myself a little bit of a ring around them. Um, then I'm going to let that dry. Here's one that I did do. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the sun. I did leave a little bit of a lip. So, and I'll show you how I have to get them on. This is one that is totally done. The snowflake is nice and I got, um, they had a pack that they were selling during the, during the Christmas season and it sold out very quickly. And it was all these little like tchotchke things like this candy cane and, and the, uh, the starburst candy and all. They were gone, so I wound up getting these off of um, Etsy. I put them in these jars. These are some jars from Hobby Lobby. Um, this is the 20 gram amount, if that gives you an idea how much you get. Um, truthfully, I think that you bought these by the piece. This is probably like a 200 piece. I, I don't necessarily recollect. And then this is the chocolate um, shavings, and they're kind of really like crumpled up pieces. I don't know if you can kind of see um, those. And I can try and give a link in the description of this of where I bought these, but um, I thought they were just as nice. These have a little bit more of a reddish tint to it than I probably would have, um, like a cinnamon, more cinnamon color, but it's it serves its purpose. So they do um, antique linen, I did it with a brush from um, Honeybee Stamps, some wash tape on there so I know it's the oxide ink, and you just literally rub over them. They got a little bit more of a browner edge to the paper than I got, but I thought they came out just as cute, truthfully. Um, I keep doing um, um. So this is going to be that one, that's going to be that one. This is the biscuit one, and I did this out of like the cheap foam you get in the kitty like craft section of like Hobby Lobby or any kind of craft store you may have. This is just as dark as brown as I could find. And then um, you just put a little bit of glue in the end and put that little chocolate shaving, and that was that. Now, like I said, I did do the surfaces of all of these with the um, antique linen oxide ink from from Tim Holtz. So that'll be the one candy, that'll be second. The thing with the um, Starburst is I put below this just like a big glob of glue and I let it sit for a few seconds maybe. And then I let it, I put this in. I didn't, problem was if you, if you put it in like right away, it kind of sinks down into the candy. And I wanted it more on top like they had it in their photos. Um, and the other thing I should have mentioned is I did these first cookies and I cut this red piece and this pink piece out of, um, yeah, that's already good. That's good. I, I cut them out of the foam because I thought they were part of that like kitty foam from the, um, the kitty section. I got to clean this off. Um, and you know what? It's not. It, it was too, if you use the foam, there's no, you don't get this gap like you see here between the backing of the red and the top of the cookie. Um, it came like smashed right up to the top. Let's see, I did a concept card with it. I don't see that I have it here. Um, if I find it, I'll show it to you. So that was a problem for me. I, like I said, I kind of liked things very realistic and I wanted it like very much like the picture and yeah I'm kind of weird like that like I I'll, I'll go the extra little bit if it needs to be sometimes so to get these prepared the other thing was this I did cut out of the heart um, this is part of the die set so the sentiment is actually found in the hug and a mug set so when you look at how many there was four different dies and stamp sets I had to buy just from the greenery to make this card. It's a lot, but I loved it. I know I can use a lot more of this stuff. So, you know, it, I was willing to do that. So the sentiment and the little tag that says with love um, were from this 
stamp set from the greetery with the hug in the mug. Then with the sweet treat set, you got, um, and this took me for a loop too, because there is an open one that is what is the back of all the cookies. I just kind of missed that. Then you have the three dies that make the top of the cookies with the stuff in it. And then um, this was for the little tag. This one's for the biscuit. This one was the um, the pinks and the red um, inside piece. Then I have, um, oh, everything always falls and it's gonna fall right on the floor. Then this was the piece that makes the chocolate on here. And then I didn't notice at first, one says hugs and one says sweet. So I kind of had to do these to emboss. So I had sweet hugs reading on here because it kind of looked funny to just say sweet or just say hugs. Um, so this is what I needed from this set. And there's a lot of different things. This is gonna make a marshmallow, but I didn't use any marshmallows in this. They don't, in this cookie set. So for me to try and get all this, oh yeah, good luck, Kristen, right? Trying to get all this back on here. So we'll do this later. So that was from that. So to get these on here, um, I have just such a mess going, don't I? So this is this one, this is this one, this is that, this is that, and then this is gonna go in the center and then to glue this stuff up you kind of have to put the glue on I should have did this first and just kind of like smooth it around um, but you can't forget the sides of it which is why I was trying to get it on there first you just kind of move it around on there um, kind of like if you're gonna try and like ice and something and then make sure it's kind of centered a little foam piece. Uh, yeah. I have, this is like a Gladware thing and it's the icing stamping up glitter. It was icy glitter or something from last year. Um, I will do a second coat on the sides after that dries. It really won't take long. So then to get these other pieces, because this is going to get glued on there, but I want to do a second coat before I put the candy cane on. Um, you needed from the greeteries banner and bow set. This is where the greeneries came in. You needed the stamps and the dies. So, you know, could you count that as two? Yeah, probably. Like I said, it's been a fortune there this year. Um, so I'll put those together. You needed, um, two. I knew I had more. Um, I have an extra. You just need two of the evergreen bowels, and I use Gina K. I am in love with these. You need her green grass and her fresh asparagus. This pine bowl was done with the fresh asparagus. Then you needed um, the two different, it looks like almost like a bayberry or something. Um, these are done in um, the fresh asparagus and the blue is I believe it was um pretty peacock from stamping up I think is the name it's a peacock something um from stamping up but just like a you need a blue with a little bit of like a gray in it um that's kind of what I used you could do a red I guess if you wanted but I was trying to be as authentic to the greedy one as I could and then the holly leaves are the grass for the background and then the fresh asparagus for the veins of inside. And these are two separate ones and I just glued them on there um, to do that. And then for the house and the tag, the red I used was the um, ooh, cherry red. No. It was red velvet, I believe. It was red velvet. And then I used, for the house, the lighter brown is the sandy beach color. 
and the darker brown is this warm cocoa color. So that of those three colors. I have lots of colors going on. So you needed six different colors for that. And then I used the red velvet and the black in the sentiment. So to get these on there, you have to go outside the lines. Doesn't that sound really weird? But the other thing is certain pieces, you have to not be very close to the edge with the glue. So this one, you can go all the way to the edge. This one, I put, these are stamping up dimensionals. These are the minis. I did like them because um, you didn't really have to cut them and they got in there to the points of the star as well, but you could use any. Like I said, this tip is really leaving something to be desired. So I found for these, you really had to glue up the dimensionals too, and you have to line up the, the little scallops on the candy. And then I was using a block and I was going with a bigger one um, and a heavier one to make sure that it didn't really, it gave very even coverage going down. This is the one I said I was going to do the edge. So now that it's kind of set a little bit, I'll go back and do a little bit of the edge. And like I said, I just pushed this around. Um, because the foam is not really going to give you like a great coverage in a sense of like how you see it when you put down on paper. It really likes to start pulling up, like make a pull of the glue. And this will dry better once it's done. Um, and then I just put a little bit of glue in the back of the candy cane. And that one will be ready in a minute. But what I want to get is this one on there next. So I get the two of them lined up and then I can move down. So for this one, I am using dimensionals um, that are a different dimensional. It doesn't, like I said, this is just using up bits of ones. Like here's a piece that I had off the back that I didn't use. I will just cut up like little pieces and get them on there. And I find you want at least I've been doing the five because, like I said, to get it into that glitter really does, sometimes it's not sitting completely straight down. And if you didn't have a lot on the back of this, I think you're going to wind up with um, it either pulling back up or it's sitting on there uneven. So, um, like I guess I'm just trying to, and then I always check on the front to make sure, like this one here, I'm seeing it from the other side. You want to make sure that it's it's hidden behind the heart. So I have no nails left. All my nails broke. It must be the changing of the seasons. I also have a hypothyroid, and that seems to be if you, makes your nails more brittle. It seems like if you're seeing a change of seasons. So hopefully, God, this is the one thing I hate about dimensionals. I do not have an ability to get this paper off the back of them. The Stampin' Up! ones, that's the only thing I can say. The Stampin' Up! dimensionals really do seem like the paper will come off of them so much easier. All right, here we go. So now I'm going to get this on here. And like I said, I go very thickly. Even though the dimensional has glue on it, I'm still doing it because I found that these glues were not adhering very well with the chunky glitter on the on them so we'll get that so now like I said this one I want to get it lined up and you got to make sure your star is going um yeah don't yeah this is already starting to lift up don't forget you want your star pointing up and this is starting to pull off so that's that one. Now the star or the heart's going to go here. So I don't necessarily need that one as much. But what I do want is this one. Um, this one is going to give me where to line up. But honestly, you want to give yourself a gap to hide those um, to be able to push these greeneries into. So don't go all the way to the edge with that glue. And you want to stay again with that going up and down and stay pretty close to be able to give yourself enough space. And I'm going to just put some of this on the inside because this one has this stuff 
the holly leaves come in from the bottom. So, the holly leaves I just pushed together in a, like a bunch and I cut off this bottom so that I can get this pushed into that um, without, I don't wanna, thing is I don't wanna see a bump behind this star. So I, I cut that off so I could try to, so I don't have as much of a, you know, a gap being formed under this cookie here. So that seems like if I cut it off, it gave it a little bit of a better, um, I want to hide it. It seemed like it hit it better. So these two I can't do until I get the heart on there. But this one and this one are going over here. And again, I'm cutting off the stems because it's that much less I have to try and shove behind this snowflake. So let's get this in there. And I don't know, it's just me. I kind of like the um, the leaves and the colors on this better. So I kind of like that on top, but you can do them whichever way you think is the best. But I do like to fan them out a little bit um, so that you can see both of them. And why that's still drying, to make your bow, um, I had gotten this tip before, and I have this old candle in a tin. Heard if you have like old pillar candles that maybe you've gotten discolored, you know, any kind of old, anything with wax. If you take your, um, your twine and you put some wax on it, it's going to behave better for you. So this one happens to smell like cypress and fir. So, you know, it does smell like Christmas, but it does. It seems to make the fibers behave, I guess, because it's encapsulating them. And I find like you don't get that fly away going in its own direction. And it really does help. Um, this happens to be a soy candor candle. I don't think it really matters which one. I'm going to just leave that on there to dry. This is a, um, what do they call that? Self-healing mat. So this won't stick on there. So I'd like to just lob it on there and let the glue do its thing. Okay. So now this has been, you know, this is set pretty well. Again, just put the glue to the center because I, I do need to get those greens over here. In there and this just was lined up these aren't going to line up this way but you know what I found it doesn't seem to matter because there's so much going on normally that would bother me if everything wasn't lined up again cut off your ends um, and then I did the same thing where I hid the evergreen kind of in the back you want this to go under, I'm putting it under the biscuit, the bottom biscuit. Don't try to push it in because if not, then you may have it showing in the center of the heart candy part of it. I, this is going behind the whole um, cookie, so to speak. And I didn't put them down first because I kind of needed where that was going to give me this alignment here. And then... I don't know where my tweezers got to. Okay, well, my reverse tweezers went on a hiatus. So I'm gonna use my scissors to just kind of lift that up. And the tag's just going on that side. And see, these just, they hang better, I find. And then for me, to keep everything kind of level, I'm using a dimensional as it flies across. You know, you can't make this stuff up. You can try to do this. I would never would. On this right-hand side of the house, I'm putting a dimensional because I want it to sit flat. So I need the dimensional on the right side um, because of the difference between the two. And this is the dimensional that's behind the blue. So I know it's going to sit and I just put a little bit on the dimensional again, just in case 
uh, I'm missing a little bit. That way at least I know what's on there. And that is my version of that greedy card. So I hope you like it. Um, again, I kind of smashed this when I was putting it on. So all you got to do, put a little bit more glue. I'm going to just do this. And that's it. So this is going to be a card I'm mailing out this year. And then I'm going to, my plan on this, again, because I don't want to ruin this, is I'm going to cut um, probably like a four by five inch insert or four by five and a quarter inch insert to go in here. And I'll put my sentiment on the insert. I'll stamp it on the insert and then I'm going to glue them inside. But I haven't really decided what sentiment I want to put on these yet. So I'll do that in another phase, I'll just sit down and I'll just blow out. I think I'm making 20 of these cards. Um, I guess these are gonna be for my personal use. So I'm gonna just, I'll sit down and I'll make 20 inserts one night and glue them in so I don't have to worry about messing up the card itself. So I hope you like this. Please, if you do, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see some other greetery cards, I do have uh, more coming that I'm making and uh, plenty more other designs. If you have any suggestions and you want to see some, feel free to drop me a message and make your request. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. Bye.